one way to describe the season of Advent, which begins today, of course, is to say that Advent operates in three tenses all at once. For example, in Advent we remember the birth of the Christ child as a past event of a birth that happened over 2,000 years ago and a, a celebration that will happen is, is, that is beginning to happen now. And this past event, yes, has great significance in the present. In that event, we once again await the birth of the Christ child into our lives, into our families, and into our church community. We await this Christmas, this holy evening, we're bathed in candlelight. We hear the story again. And we say, yes, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for this great and wonderful gift. And we rejoice in God's presence. God, having come among us as a babe, as a child, as a human, just like us, to love us. And as we wait, we remember all the good Christmases that, that have come and gone, that have passed. We remember them and, and make them part of this Christmas, songs and carols, special dinners and Christmas treats, candlelit worship, visits and phone calls, prayers and readings, cards and notes and the wonderful sounds, sights, and smells of the season. In that event, we await a past event, and indeed we prepare our lives for it. And the preparation we do enriches our lives and makes this time the special time that it is. But in Advent, we also await the future, a special future. We await the, the unveiling of the reign of God. Something which is continually being revealed but is yet to be fully realized. We await a time that Isaiah and Jesus describe as, as a time, yes, of judgment. A time when all the accounts are settled. And they are not always settled comfortably. But they are always settled rightly. A time when two will be in the field and, and one will be taken and the other will be left. A time when at long last all the swords are beaten into plowshares and all spears into pruning hooks and we will learn war no more. And the king of peace, the prince of peace, will declare a true peace at last. We await a time of judgment we await a time of salvation. We await the time of Christ's return, the time when the, the whole world becomes God's kingdom, the time when all who have passed through judgment are one, one in joy, one in faith, one in hope, and one in love. We await the time when sin and suffering and pain and death are gone forever. So come, says Eliza, as he proclaims the word of judgment and of salvation in today's reading. Come, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. But we also need to note that this is a word about what we do now, today, as we await tomorrow. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord, says Isaiah. Stay awake. Be alert, says Jesus. And this is the third tense of Advent, the present tense, the, the active tense. You see, Advent is not simply about remembering something that happened 2,000 years ago. And it is not only about looking forward to something that is going to happen in the future. Advent is also about knowing where we are and preparing for Christ's return in the here 
and the now, wherever that may be. It's a time for Christ's light to be around us and, and shining from within us today, not just in the past or the future. For His Spirit to be dwelling in our hearts and our minds here, now, in this minute for his living presence to be seen in all that we are currently saying and doing, in all that we are currently seeing and hearing. And in this sense, Advent memory and Advent hope are somehow joined together. Together our past experience and our, our future expectations about the reign of God and about Christ the Messiah are somehow realized right now. Not simply because of our preparation for it, but because of the divine truth about God's past and God's present and God's future. The truth that God has been with us, that God will be with us, but also that God, Emmanuel, is with us even now. Advent as a season of the church year helps us to be prepared. It reminds us to keep our ears and our eyes and our hearts open. Open for, for the inbreaking of the saving presence and the power of the Almighty God coming into our lives. Because yes, these are indeed, as Christ put it, times like the times of Moses, excuse me, of Noah. Ordinary times. Times when we are busily going about our day-to-day -day lives, doing all the things that we have to do. We are running here and there as they did in the days of Noah. Men and women are marrying, are giving in marriage, and children play games and go to school, and adults go to work or to visit friends or to shop. The everydayness in which we live is where we find ourselves as they found themselves in the days of Noah. These are ordinary times with our wars and rumor of wars. Ordinary times with our good and with our evil, with our love and with our hate. The ordinary times when it is easy to forget the extraordinary and to forget to be ready to be watching for it when it breaks into our lives. For all time, but especially for this time, this ordinary time, this time right now, the question is this, Jesus is asking. Are we ready? Are we watching? Are we paying attention? Are our homes and our lives in order? Are we ready? The challenge for us is to look around. To look around at the world around us, to look around our lives and to see what is going on. And to think as we, as we pray in our homes and here in the sanctuary that, that we somehow know how to read the signs of the times. And to pray for God's kingdom to come and for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. I think we all long for peace. We long for peace as even now we hear of terrorist attacks in London and in other places. We long for his coming as we think of children who go hungry. As we hear of earthquakes and floods and fires. And we hope we all hope for the time of eternal blessing. We, we hope for us and we hope for the world for Christ to return in power and glory. But what about now? What about now? What about the God who is here with us even as we speak? What about the Christ who is here with us now? Are we ready? Are our houses in order? Are they ready for his coming? Are we 
we making him comfortable? Do we let him live with us? Do we let him own us completely? Or do we keep the ownership of our lives for ourselves safe and locked and tucked away? Years ago, I heard this idea described like this. Jesus is coming, and he is coming into our homes. He is coming into our lives. Are we willing to open the door this season of Advent and let him look in every nook and cranny? Are there beds that we would rather he not take a peek under? Are there rooms in our lives that we hope don't don't go in there, Jesus? It's messy. I don't want you to see it. And oh, we have those rooms, don't we? There's the room where we we hide our anger and resentment at other people. Don't open that door, Jesus, please. I don't want you to see in that part of my life. There's that room where, where we like to disappear and hide. We like to disappear and hide in that room when we realize that doing the right thing might cost us something. That doing the right thing might cost us time or comfort or money or something else we really care about. Don't go in that room, Jesus. That's the room where we like to hide. There's that room where we separate other people. We, we put some people into this room and we put some people into that room and we close the door because, let's face it, we really don't want to deal with those kind of people, do we? Do we want Jesus to open those doors? There's that room where we make judgments where we make judgments about people and we decide, we decide what they deserve. Because it's our decision, right? Now Jesus, don't open that door either. Advent speaks to us about God's coming to us about Christ coming to us, about light shining in those dark places, and about spears being turned into pruning hooks, and about judgment coming upon the earth, and salvation coming to the people of God. And that speaking, yes, is for yesterday and for tomorrow, but it is also for today. So let us say thank you to Isaiah and to Jesus for their words on this first Sunday of Advent. Thank you, Isaiah. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Jesus, for the call to keep awake and to walk in the light instead of the darkness. We have good words and good advice in our readings today, not just for the coming of the kingdom all over the world, but for the, king, the coming of the kingdom of Christ into our lives today. So, let us clean house. Or better yet, let us let Christ clean our house. Let him open the doors to those secret rooms where we do not want anyone to look. Let him throw open those rooms. Let him throw open our homes. And let the Lord who knocks come in and dine with us. Let us be ready. Let us be alert. Let us be awake. For he is coming. He is coming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.